Domino! G'day scientists, today we're reviewing the October Tinker Crate kit from KiwiCo, which is a wooden automaton. Right, let's open up and take a look. This kit cost me $40, but you can often get discount vouchers to make them a little bit cheaper. First up inside, we have the instructions, and they look um, pretty good actually, lots of instructions. The whole thing looks like it's made of wood, which is amazing. Oh, and also an instructional video, so you can watch along as well. Then we have the Tinkerzine book, which has lots of information about automatons and curiosities. I was fascinated by these robots, these clockwork robots when we used to visit children's museums when I was younger and definitely played a part in my fascination with robots and science fiction. Okay, here are the steps for making the automaton. Two different kits, this is pretty cool. One is the wooden stair climbing ball kit and this is an art automaton making reuse of the box. And another experiment here for doing a spinning automaton which is like a dance girl or a flying bird. This is awesome. This fold out section here has the cutout parts to make the automaton. I love the look of this already. And as usual with the Tinker Zine, the Tinker Library contains external links to other things you can read about if you found this interesting. Right, let's see what else is in the kit. We have wooden blocks, some sticky pads and cable ties, wooden sticks, some more wooden parts and the wooden balls, and then the cardboard bits that are used to make the automaton and the plastic straw and some hole punch things. Let's make the wooden kit. Start with step A, build the frame. We need tail piece and the short piece. Side walls, the cardboard brace, cardboard spacers. As with all the KiwiCo kits I've reviewed so far, which admittedly is only two, both of them have been made with minimal plastic parts, which is something I really appreciate because a lot of the kits we've reviewed from the other companies are full of plastic. In fact, the DNA ones we reviewed last week were almost 100% plastic and didn't really contain much else. And now we also need the cardboard locking piece, foam sticky squares and the cardboard locking piece. Step one, lay out the two support pieces, stick a sticky foam square underneath each slit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Step three, take the tool support piece and flip it over, slide the walls into the slit uh, and push down over the foam pieces and the foam pieces keep it nice and secure. Do the same on this side, slit it in, slide it down. Step four, place the cardboard brace between the walls and into the angled slits. Step five, slide the walls into the short support piece and press down. Even though this is made out of very thin wood and card, and a few foam pads. It's actually very secure already. Slide the seven cardboard spacers into the vertical slits in the walls and push the spacers all the way through so the notches stick out the other side. You can see the notches sticking out the other side there. Then final step, turn the frame around and slide the locking cardboard piece in to keep the spacers in place. And that goes down all the way down like that, stops these from sliding out. There we go, nice and secure. Let's go on to part B. We need the completed frame from part A, the crank cams, which are these circular parts here, the rubber rings and the sticky foam strips. Turn the frame around so that the short side is on the right and slide the crank through the short side. Step two, slide a rubber ring onto the crank and push it down to the notch closest to the handle. Slide a cam onto the crank and make sure it's facing down. Oh, this is quite hard. Let's try another one. Let's see if it's an issue with just that cam. These are super hard to get on. I'm gonna look at the instructional video to see if we're doing it properly. Well, the good news is we're doing it correctly. It's just very hard. I'm gonna take these last three cams away and file them down a bit so they can get onto the stick a bit easier. We were having no luck getting these cams onto the shaft because they just haven't been cut with big enough holes. So I'm gonna take this small file here and just file them down a small bit. There we go, much easier. It's amazing, just a small, tiny, tiny filing makes these go on a lot easier. And it's quite disappointing that I've had to do that. My last KiwiCo kit was really good. I enjoyed making it, it went together a breeze. Now I initially thought I was doing this wrong. I thought, how can it possibly be they don't slide on? But check the guy out in the video. He literally just pops them on, no hassle at all. These have definitely not been cut with enough gap to slide them on easily. If you didn't have a minuscule tiny file like that, you would be stuck. I now have all the cams in place and as you can see, they're in a pattern that goes up, down, up, down, up, down. 
Hey, this step is a little strange because you think we would just use more of these rubber seals to do this. But what we're going to do is take two strips like that, sandwich them together and on this side, do the same thing. Now when we turn this, we've got the cam going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down like this. Okay, now we're building the stairs part C. We need the stair pieces and they have a slight edge to them and they go in height order. Step three, attach a sticker to the bottom of each stair. Ah, and these stickers are slidey plastic and I'm guessing that's to help make them slippy on the cams. One, two, three, four. Domino! Five, six. Position the frame with the crank on the right and drop the stair pieces into the slots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take a foam sticky square above both notches in the chute. There, there, and then slide it so the foam down. That's angled slightly up so the ball will slide back down again. Now put it all together. You get the three balls and place them onto the stairs like that. Turn the handle and quite coolly, the balls are climbing the stairs and you can actually turn this pretty fast. It's very sturdy, very impressive. And you can see the balls are climbing the stairs, which is pretty remarkable. When we turn the handle here, the handle turns these cams, which moves the stairs up and down, which moves the balls up. And then we get to the top, they slide back down and start again. Building this kit was really good fun. The pieces are made of mostly wood and cardboard, which is a delight compared to the plastic monstrosities I'm normally reviewing on this channel. The Tinkerzine book, beautiful. Lots of experiments. You get to reuse the box and make another experiment, as well as the wooden automaton with the climbing balls. However, I had to manually file down some parts of this model to get it to work. And most people are not gonna have a file that small. It's a real shame because the rest of this kit was awesome. But if you bought it and were not able to assemble the wooden automaton, you'd be very disappointed. I am gonna give the wooden automaton from the KiwiCo Tinker Crate one star for fun, three stars for learning, and three stars for price. Bye or bye bye. I'm so sorry, KiwiCo. It's a bye bye. If the kit doesn't work, it's just not fun. Let me know in the comments below if you would put up with a kit where you have to make manual alterations to make it work. KiwiCo kits are normally great. In fact, if you haven't seen it already, why don't you check out this video where I make the KiwiCo September kit, the spin art machine.